Hello all and welcome to another Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Today's video was a suggestion by Kraken, so thank you for that. In it we have Stuart Pound, a man who is going to slam dunk debunk Brian Cox. A man who looks like he's broadcasting from a broom cupboard is going to debunk Brian Cox. First degree honours in physics, doctor of particle physics, BBC presenter, OBE Brian Cox. And yes, I'm being serious. You have to hear his deluded confidence, it's staggering. I've seen some of his other videos and he's actually filmed the smartphone spirit level for almost an entire flight to prove that the plane he's on does not fly over a curve. Okay Stuart, the floor is yours. This is going to be a review of Professor Brian Cox and the power of gravity. So. I'll inform the BBC that your review is imminent. That's imminent. Time for a bit of fundamental physics. Fundamental All physics? All things follow the same rate under gravity. And that's because they're following geodesics through curved space time, but that's not important. Hold on a minute, there was a lot of information there. There really isn't. There's 19 words, but if that's too much for you, then there's no shame in admitting it. And some of it apparently wasn't very important. And some of it was clearly wrong. Let's have it. Oh, is it the old gravity pulling him down, back down, and steps? Time for a bit of fundamental physics. All things follow the same rate under gravity. No, they don't. They don't. I've seen people jump out of planes and live because they open a parachute and they fall at a different rate. I'm going to assume that you didn't listen in physics class at school, okay? Just wanted to put that one out there. Right, all things fall at the same rate under gravity. They absolutely do. Your pathetic answer was pathetic because you don't know anything about forces. A parachute is slows because of air resistance. This air resistance generates a force which begins to counteract the force of gravity. The resultant force is still in the direction of Earth, but it is smaller than when the skydiver had no parachute. Therefore, he falls at a slower rate. Everything does fall at the same rate with the absence of another force, you can just influence that rate with other forces. So, what's this got to do with the power of gravity? Or, as I'm sure Professor Brian Cox would admit, the weakest force in the universe. If you'd bother to put any context into your video, you'd know that the video you're reviewing is BBC's Wonder of Life. It is a documentary series on natural physics and biology. Come on. You know, it's a mixture. You know, yeah, we know what's going to happen with a, a watermelon and a grape. And he's going to tell us about mass and surface tension or surface area of the object that's being dropped. And so it is, he's creating a sophisticated explanation where he's already kind of, he's already slipped in, he's already, you know, he's got that, the card up his sleeve. And I'm not saying he's doing it deliberately. He probably absolutely believes what he's saying. That's because what he's saying is true, whether or not you believe it. Who are you to sit there and tell this man that he's wrong? Like you have the keys to the universe. Who are you to directly contradict the entire history of our scientific endeavours? To piss all over the memory of people that have given their very lives in the pursuit of a better tomorrow for our species. You are an ignorant, arrogant fool that has all the intellectual prowess of a polystyrene cup. But it's just, it's not right. First of all, the grape has a larger surface area in relation to its volume, and therefore its mass, than the melon. And so, although in a vacuum, if you took away the air... They... Then there it is. There it is. And it? It's so the obvious. Melon. And so, although in a vacuum, if you took away the air, they would both fall at the same rate. Actually, in reality, the grape falls a bit slower than the melon. Oh, oh right, so, actually, so... Or physics. All things fall at the same rate under gravity. And that's because... Right, so when he says that all things fall at the same rate under gravity, he's not talking about actual reality. Because later on, when he says... Actually, in reality, things... Uh, 
آره نه falls a bit slower than the melon also the melon fall at the same rate actually in reality the grape falls a bit slower than the melon actually in reality which is where we all exist I hope and I mean if we can't agree on a reality then what's the point in even talking about this stuff do you know what I mean there is a reality a physical reality and physics so because he's developing a point starting from the ground up on a topic you're ripping him apart although strangely you have no problem that things fall at the same rate in a vacuum so do you believe in gravity or not but and it's like the people I see who get involved in it you know they, it's like a religion and it's and people, I think, fall into this whole astrophysics, or you know, well, it's all this theoretical physics, and it? it's, you know, but people fall into it, and then they learn this stuff, and they're good at it because they, they they've, that's what school does. It teaches you to to take in information and regurgitate it without holding another, you know opinion on it it's like it's it's just how it is what you mean like reading and writing i can't believe you fell for that one all those letters and you believe they all make the sound they do such naivety what about history you've probably got no problem with the fact that america was discovered in 1492 but guess what that's a lie yep total rubbish they actually discovered europe not we discovered them and they populate it why do you think we've got basketballs and cheeseburgers you lot are just asleep. You need to wake up and see we are all Americans. Also, the melon is more massive, and so it has more kinetic energy when it hits the ground. Remember, from physics class, kinetic energy is a half mv squared. Brian, he's going to absolutely dispute this equation. So if you reduce m, you reduce the energy. The upshot of that... No, I don't... I, I mean, I know... Reduce M, you reduce the energy. The upshot of that is that the melon has a lot more energy when it hits the ground. It has to dissipate well, it in some I mean, way, this is and it dissipates it. By applying again, this is a sophisticated bit of deception. Told you. And I don't even know whether he know. I think I think they probably, you know, I don't know whether they're given a bit of a script. Or whether this is his own... I don't know how this stuff works. Now, Stuart, come on. You're trying to discredit Brian Cox, yet you are also saying you don't know how this stuff works. It's basic physics. You can literally do an experiment yourself to prove kinetic energy. It's not hard. It's not deception. It's an education. And the more that people like you try to bring the entirety of scientific education down, the more, the more you are risking the progress of our species. I'm being deadly serious. You can't go around saying it's all rubbish. You just can't. Right, so let's examine this using a bit of common sense. Please, please do, Stuart. A melon? Yeah, you are. But how did the melon get there in the first place? <laughs> um, it was grown under, in, under the influence of photosynthesis using a seed cultivated and then harvested. Finally, it was probably purchased by the BBC and placed in this building for the use in this experiment. That's the question we Doesn't need to matter. ask. What, um, it didn't just appear in space and fall to the ground. It had to be picked up from a place where it was sitting, supported in space, and carried up the stairs and put into a position in space let go where it's unsupported and what were we expecting to happen are we expecting it to just flow um no why would we expect that the law of conservation of energy states that energy can't be created or destroyed so whilst it's in the bowl it has gravitational potential energy brian picks it up and lifts it even higher so it has even more gravitational potential energy when he lets go of it 
the gravitational energy is converted to kinetic energy, which in turn is converted into thermal and sound energy when it hits the ground. Simples. You know, it's, it's common sense. The molecules surrounding the melon can't support it because the melon is more dense than the air. And there it is. Gravity is not real. Density is the reason for the falling of objects. I've already debunked that one on a previous video. I'll leave the link in the description. And if Brian Cox was to walk up more flights of steps, he would exert more energy carrying it further into the air to a position in space where he's going to give it more time to fall through space and it's going to accelerate faster and faster and faster until it reaches an equilibrium with the medium that it's falling in. It doesn't bounce. And that's your 9.8 metres per second squared or whatever the, the calculation they use to describe gravity. Well, it doesn't describe gravity. It doesn't describe a force. You know, you, the best explanation of gravity that I could give simple explanation would be gravity is life plus relative density and that good sir is why you are not responsible for the education of our children i've had enough of this guy now i think we've done enough to uh, discredit his beliefs besides i've got a question for you stuart if gravity is just density then why does the moon not fall to earth i mean it's denser than air surely so why is it not falling I'll wait for your made up answer. That's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Simon Dan, and if the feeling takes you, please like and subscribe and share this video. See you all again soon.